I want to show you how to properly upload your gaming videos to YouTube using either your PC or your mobile device. Now I'm going to walk you through the exact uploading process step by step and at the end I'm also going to show you how to avoid a really common mistake that prevents a lot of beginning YouTubers from getting views and subscribers. Let's get stuck into it. G'day, my name's Marcus. I've worked on multiple successful channels, but I understand that getting views and subscribers is bloody goddamn hard. I know that because when I first started on YouTube, I sucked. But nowadays, I suck a little bit less, so I started GYGC to share some of my YouTube experiences, tactics, and strategies with people like you. Now, on this channel, I post a variety of videos showing you exactly how I recommend you grow your gaming channel. But those videos are about as useful as waterproof tea bags if you don't know how to upload videos in the first place. Uploading a video in itself isn't hard, but recently Recently, there have been some updates to the way you upload videos and there are some specific things that gaming creators need to know that a lot of the generic video uploading tutorials don't cover. So I'm going to start by showing you how to upload your video on PC, then I'm going to show you how to upload your video on mobile and at the end I'm going to show you how to avoid making a really common mistake a lot of gaming creators make and it handicaps their videos and it stops them getting views and I want to make sure you stick around for that because it's going to be really important. Right, so the first thing you're going to do is go to YouTube and pretty much on any page on YouTube if you're signed in, you will see up in the top right hand corner a video icon with a plus on it. So you're going to click on that icon and it's going to give you options. You're going to click on that icon and depending on what features you have verified on your YouTube account, you'll see a couple of options. But you will always see at least one option titled upload a video or something similar. What you're going to do is you're going to click on that and it's going to take you to a screen where you will be able to select the video you want to upload. You can obviously click on the select files button or you can just drag and drop your video file into the uploader. Once you drag it in, it's going to automatically start uploading just like this. Down the bottom, you're going to be able to see a progress bar. It's going to upload from zero to 100%, obviously. Then it's actually going to go one more time and do what it's called processing. So it's going to process um, and then your video will be done. In terms of the things you can see on screen right now, so you will see a title box and a description box um, front and center as of now. Now what you're going to do, obviously, is title your video. This is the thing that people are actually going to see on YouTube when they see your video displayed and then use the description to describe your video and maybe include any relevant links or information. If we scroll down, if you verified your YouTube account, which I highly recommend you do, you will see an option to upload a thumbnail. Now I always recommend uploading a custom thumbnail, however if you don't have custom thumbnails, you can select from one of the three automatically generated thumbnails from YouTube by simply clicking on them. Below that you'll see a little drop down box which will allow you to add the video to a playlist if you created a playlist. So if you have a playlist, you just click on that box, select the playlist list that you want to add this video to and then hit done. Below that you'll see two check boxes where you can label your content as either made for kids or not made for kids. Now in this scenario YouTube's definition of made for kids is any content targeting peoples under the age of 13. So if your video is aimed at people 13 or younger you want to click made for kids. If not obviously you select no it's not made for kids. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to click on more options now because there's a bunch of other cool options that we want to be able to use to customize our video. So the first is a checkbox that allows us to inform YouTube and our viewers of whether or not there is paid promotion in our video. So this is if we're featuring like a sponsorship or a product placement or something like that. But I'm assuming since you're watching this video, you probably aren't up to that stage yet. Below that, very important, we have our tags box. So this is where you can add relevant keywords and tags that describe your video. And this will help with SEO or search engine optimization, which will make it basically easier for people to find or be recommended your videos. We come down a little bit lower, we have a bunch of more advanced settings and most of these are very self-explanatory. And you can just go through all of these or leave them them on default. However, down below, something really important, you want to come down to this box here in category and you want to select gaming. Now an additional step that you want to do here that most of these other tutorials won't show you is you want to select the name of your game. So you can type it in here and if it's a relatively well-known game, the game will pop up and then you click on it, select it and basically that's going to add your video to like YouTube's internal playlist containing that game and basically that will just mean that it's going to be much more likely for people who have shown interest in that game to be recommended you video. Well in theory that's how it works anyway. Below that there are two more options that you may want to consider changing. The first is comment visibility. So that will allow you to decide how comments display on your video. So for example if you click allow all comments it's going to automatically allow all comments or if you uh, hold all comments for review basically what that's going to do is when someone leaves a comment it's going to send it to your YouTube dashboard where you can either approve it or deny it before it actually goes live on the video. You can disable comments which obviously disables all comments or you can hold potentially inappropriate comments 
for review. And this means that YouTube is going to basically analyze each comment before it's posted on your channel. If it senses things like profanity or spam or whatever, it will automatically hold that comment for review. And again, you can approve it or deny it in your YouTube dashboard. The last kind of important thing you want to look at is show how many viewers like or dislike the video. So basically that's just going to show the number of likes and dislikes on your video. So I don't know if you've ever clicked on one of those YouTube videos and noticed that it just had like and dislike under the dislike and like buttons and you couldn't actually see how many people liked and disliked. This checkbox toggles that. Now once you've set all your settings, you're just going to hit next video elements. Now these are really cool and really important. Basically these will allow you to add little annotations throughout your video that you can include uh, links that can link viewers to other videos for example. That's a card so to add a card you just hit the add button. It'll send you to a little dashboard where you can add a card. Hit save and it'll send you back to this page. Next one is end screens. So the same thing, you hit add to add an end screen. And an end screen are those elements that you'll see pop up at the end of a YouTube video. Generally speaking, they'll be like a round circle that if you tap on, you can subscribe to the creator. And also some rectangular boxes where if you tap on them, they'll take you to other YouTube videos or playlists. So in future, once you've uploaded a couple of videos, you can use your end screens to promote previous videos in new videos. This is really cool because it means when your viewers finish your video, you can offer them another one of your videos. And that's one of the way that videos and YouTube channels start spiraling. You can probably see how the snowball effect occurs in these situations. Our final tab is visibility. And this decides how people are able to see our videos. So we have two major options here, that's save and publish or schedule. So if we select save and publish, then when we select one of the below options and hit save, that video is automatically going to be assigned to that category. If we hit schedule, we can schedule our video to go live at a later date. Schedule is pretty self-explanatory, but I'm going to explain save and publish because that may be less explanatory. First of all, we have the private option. So private means that you will be the only person who will be able to see that video. Next, we have unlisted. If you select the unlisted box and hit save, that's going to upload the video to your channel, but people won't be able to see it. The public won't be able to see it. Only people who have a direct link to that video will be able to view it. So for example, if you're trying to share a video just with your friends and family and you don't want the rest of the world to see it, you can upload it to unlisted, then just copy and paste the link out to your friends and family. And finally, you have public. Public is the default option on YouTube where the public can see it. Everybody can watch your video. Below public, you can also see a little box that gives us the option to do what's called an instant premiere. So it means that your video will go live with a little live chat so you can watch it and interact with other people watching it for the first time. It's kind of like a little mini event, like a movie premiere kind of thing on YouTube. Once you've selected your visibility option, you can hit save and you're done. Your video will go live the way you specified. And if you ever need to change or edit something, you can come back to this exact page you're on now, the videos tab in YouTube studio, hover over your video, hit the little pencil icon, and it's going to give you the option to edit and modify most of the things we just saw again in the future. If you made a mistake, for example, or need to update something. Now I'm going to show you how to upload your videos on mobile. But since we've covered most of the basic terminology and what stuff does, I'm going to go over this really quickly because I want to make sure that you get to the end of this video and you learn how to avoid the mistake that a lot of YouTubers make that prevents them from getting views. So let's get right into it. Firstly, you're going to go to your YouTube app on your phone. Again, you're going to see a similar looking video icon generally in the top right hand corner. You're going to click on that and you're going to have a bunch of different options depending again on what your channel has enabled. However, you will have the video option and we're just going to click on that to upload a video. Then you can scroll through your camera roll and select the video you want to upload. You'll be sent to a page like this where you can actually trim your video if you want to, but I'm assuming you've probably already edited it so you wouldn't want to do that. And then you're going to have the options to add your titles, descriptions, change your visibility, so from private private, public, unlisted, etc. And you can add a location. Now you might notice that on mobile, there wasn't anywhere near as many options as there were on desktop. Now this can be a bit frustrating. In fact, it's actually downright pathetic when compared to desktop. But my friends, I have a workaround for you that will allow you to edit all of that extra information on mobile using another free app. So let me explain. You'll have to download an app called YouTube Studio. So what you're going to do is you're going to do exactly what I just showed you how to do, upload your video to YouTube, but generally try and put it on private. And in YouTube Studio, you'll see the video you just uploaded to private. Now, when you open up the app, you'll generally be sent to your dashboard, which looks like this. We're going to click on the three bars in the top left. We're going to go to videos. In the videos tab, we're going to see the video we just uploaded to private. We're going to simply tap on that video. It's going to send us to a page that looks like this. And we're going to click that familiar little pencil icon in the top right hand corner. 
When we do that, we're gonna see a bunch of different options that are laid out differently to the way they were on desktop. But if you go through them, you'll find that they're pretty much exactly the same. You can do things like turn on your monetization, you can adjust some of the more advanced features, you can add tags, etc., etc. But since I've already explained what all those things do to you, I'm gonna skip over that and let you fiddle around with that if you're uploading videos on mobile. And let's jump straight into tackling the mistake I mentioned earlier that so many YouTubers make. And this mistake is this not caring or putting effort into your video description. Now the description sounds very anticlimactic. It sounds like something that wouldn't really matter. It's just describing your video to the viewer, right? Describing your video to the 0.01% of people who actually click and read the damn description. Man, I wish I had that much free time. But no, the description's actually a bit more important than that because what it does is it gives YouTube information on what your video is about. So just like the tags, the YouTube algorithm analyzes the words in your description description and from that it tries to figure out what your video is about. Now let's say we're creating a video about a game Fortnite. Well we'd want to write in our description about our Fortnite video, describing the video to our viewers and also hopefully including some key words that describe our video such as Fortnite. And what the YouTube algorithm will do is we'll actually analyze that description, it will notice those keywords or keyword phrases and it will be more likely to promote your video to people who are interested in those topics. So in summary, I know there are a lot of exciting things to play with, but don't skip over your description. Yes, it is boring, but it is really important. And I see so many people skip it. The amount of gaming videos that you see on YouTube that just don't have descriptions is freaking depressing. But the good news is if you put effort into your description and correctly describe your video, preferably including keywords in that description, your videos will have a better chance of being promoted by the YouTube algorithm than most of the other YouTubers. Now, speaking of search optimization and getting your videos promoted, another way to optimize your videos is to properly add tags. Remember the things we covered earlier. Now a lot of people also make the mistake of not correctly adding tags. They add like one simple keyword or really general tags and this is really not a good idea especially when you're first starting out. So this video has been going for a while. I'm going to cut it here but I'd highly recommend you check out the video on screen because in it I'll show you how to properly add tags the right way so your videos have a better chance of getting promoted by the YouTube algorithm. I think you'll find it super valuable and it's a pretty quick video so it won't take up too much more of your day. It's on screen now, you can click it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm off to watch some paint dry and I'll see you in that video.